always a good day on the Robes 08 channel. I got two of them right here that you're going to see in this upcoming video. Yeah, Givenchy, but uh, we got our Uncle Serge in the building. And it's been a while since I've purchased an Uncle Serge fragrance. Look at the new bottle design. Finally got one in my hands. These are huge 100 ml bottle. Not the little sissy 50 mils that they used to uh, give us. But uh, yeah, I got a thick haul. And I mean thick double C, eight bottles, including these two, all testers. And we're going to talk about testers while we're unboxing slash talking about this haul. But uh, before we get into that, we got to get into my intro music. Let's go. family welcome to the world Boy channel i'm your host mark today we are not unboxing these eight cents because they're already unboxed these were actually testers that i purchased uh, online um this is a great way to save some money and not that i'm hurting for money but at the same time um if i could shave 20 30 dollars per tester as you can see here um, I can feed my hobby a little bit more. <laughs> so testers are good. Um, I, uh, as you can see, none of them are missing their cap and this is no, that's not a, a hit at Voyage here. Uh, it doesn't come with a cap, but it's a kind of cool bottle design, but they all come with a cap and I do my research to make sure that I do get the full bottle presentation. However, I do miss the box on some of them. And that's, what's great with testers is if you don't really care about the box, I mean, you can get a full presentation. They may etch like tester, like on this one. I don't know if you guys can see, probably not. It They etch tester on uh, each of the bottles, but the same juice is inside. A lot of these are basically for my summer, spring and summer of 2020. I um, wanted to bulk that up. Um, I've purchased these from February until now um i just haven't had the time to shoot and let you guys know about these uh, releases or the ones that i just got so this is a culmination of many months and i just went okay let's do a whole tester lineup for an unboxing haul why not i got eight of them here so this is good um and i have one that i'm purposely looking to get for fall which is this one a, a darker uncle serge uh release i'm all over the map as i usually am you're gonna see a lot of different uh types of fragrances that uh, will be great for summer, uh, even spring. Uh, most of these, and I'll let you know, are blind buys. These are, I live dangerously. <laughs> um, so um, I purchased a lot of fragrances that I already know my taste. Um, a lot of these are flankers to uh, original bottles that I currently own. Um, so I kind of know what I'm going to get as far as the fragrance goes. So don't do what I do, kids. Um, as far as the different sites that I go, usually I stick with Fragrance X and on fragrancebuy.ca, which is in my own backyard here um, in Canada. Uh, fragrancebuy.ca is actually a really legit site for uh, for me because I get like one day shipping. It's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna note that uh, if I can with some of these. Now, if you're new here, thank you for watching. Hey, while you're here, subscribe, support the channel, hit that bell. Every time you hit the bell, I buy a new fragrance. Real talk. I'm also all over social media under Robes08. Keep tabs on me on behind the scenes type of stuff, including set of the day, set of the night, new purchases, stuff like this. What I'm working on in the future for this YouTube channel. This is my hub, but if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see what I'm, I've been wearing. If you follow me on Facebook, you may see what I'm actually working on. So things like that, it's great to see what I'm working on behind the scenes of this YouTube channel. Also, if you have a Facebook account, you can follow my page, but also I have a Facebook group uh, where myself and around 18,000 members now are in this group called Fragrance Guru Nation that I built. And um, yeah, we talk about new releases. Uh, some of the members buy, sell, swap. Um, you discover new YouTubers because they post their videos on uh, that group. Um, great source of information if you're in this hobby. As deep as I am, it just keeps you informed. Um, especially somebody with a YouTube channel. You know, I'm, I'm on the pulse of this uh, on YouTube and of course the fragrance game. So enough chit chat. Let's talk about the bottles that are beside me because that's why you tuned in. I got eight of them. So I got a pretty big haul here for me. Usually I'm looking at three, four bottles, but this time we got eight. 
and I don't even have to unbox them. So it's not going to take me too much time here. Um, so I'm going to introduce them real quick. Usually I just go one by one by one and kind of talk about the story, but I'm just going to go through uh, one of them and I'm going to talk about the story spray it and actually let you guys know my thoughts So let's talk about 1 million cologne because it's the closest one next to me here uh, 1 million cologne uh, From Paco Rabanne are released back in 2015 um, To me and a lot of you out there that are big fans of the 1 million lineup um, Maybe have missed this um, Never really wanted to smell it. Um, the 1 million DNA doesn't really evoke freshness and and I'll be quite honest with you guys and a lot of you that know me on my channel is that anything that has like the name cologne on it, fresh, blue, light, things like that, I'm just not interested. So um, as funny as it is, I've never smelt this. I've passed by it quite a bit, never wanted to for some reason, never gave it any thought. Um, but recently I've purchased, of course, 1 million, um, intense, which was, uh, one also that I just, it was discontinued so hard to find, finally got it. Now I kind of want to finish up my 1 million collection and this one, uh, is axed, um, discontinued. So before it gets in a ridiculous price point or very hard to find, um, these are kicking around like this tester, I think was, I'd like to say $50 Canadian, very decent price. Um, so I just really wanted to finish the set as a collector. So without further ado, let's uh, spray this one. Um, the noses behind uh, this one is uh, Two-Headed Monster, Girard and Pecho. Uh, great noses, by the way, uh, behind this one. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be a lighter version of 1 million, which I think it might work. We'll see. <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's got that familiar uh, 1 million DNA, but uh, freshened, uh, almost watery. Um, it actually is pretty interesting. Um, it works. I <laughs> wasn't expecting it to work. Um, what can I say? Um, it delves a lot. Um, it, it grabs a lot of rose here. There's a lot of, uh, of, of floral quality, um, almost a watery rose here, but it, it's met with... Um, some orange, uh, orange facets, a citric, uh, acid. Um, you don't get much of the darker tones off this piece of paper, which is really nice. Um, it's really actually thin. It has some sharpness up top. It's got a pretty bad juniper note <laughs> that I'm, I'm feeling right now. Oh, uh, juniper when it's bad, it's bad. Eh? Um, Synthetic, yeah, that's what the 1 million series is all about. Um, don't expect anything crazy out of 1 million cologne, but honestly, um, again, just having an open mind on this release. And again, I'm a, I'm a fan of the 1 million lineup. Um, I, I still wear it from time to time. Um, uh, you know, I'm not huge on the lineup, but I, I like to see what they can do with the DNA. Um, I really like this cologne version. Honestly, um, Watery Rose, uh, sharp citrus up top, orange, um, really thinned out, 1 million, actually. Um, I, I don't know how that's going to do on my skin, but nothing groundbreaking here, but uh, definitely happy that I did not um, just forego um, this flanker and waited till it was going to be like 150 online um, and trying to find it on eBay just to finish a collection. Um, and honestly, when a collector like me uh, goes and gets uh, final pieces to finish a collection, and again, I'm never always done unless 1 million kind of gets axed by Paco Rabanne as a whole, uh, which I don't think is going to be happening anytime soon since they have a new release. But um, it's always nice as a collector to add these older pieces or pieces that you felt weren't worth um, gravitating towards. And they actually surprise you. And I know there's not too much talk about, I know there's a few YouTubers that talked about this release, but overall, bah, um, good. I like this one, not bad. Next, we're gonna go with the House of Cartier. Um, Cartier, I always felt underrated brand in the fragrance community on YouTube. Um, it feels like it's like pulling, trying to pull teeth to try to get a fragrance review out with fragrance reviewers on this brand. It feels like it's just, I don't know, it's a brand that is actually half decent. I'm really steadily releasing solid releases. Nothing crazy or hyped up as you can tell in the YouTube community, but I feel like um, obviously when I first started my journey, I had Roadster here by Cartier, the mint-based fragrance. Um, 
Still one of my favorite mints of all time, and that means designer and niche. Um, it really is a great mint-based fragrance. And the bottle is not that bad either. Really thick glass. Um, I feel like these bottle presentations are really nice. Roadster, one of my favorite releases uh, of all time, to be honest, and almost always going for that number one spot in spring. Um, here we have, again, this is not a body double. <laughs> this is a uh, Roadster Sport. And you'll see once I do a close up of this, uh, this bottle, um, the little red line, which is different from the original, which is saying sport. Um, now this one is not a blind buy. Um, I actually have on my channel, um, I, I got a sample of this last year. I just went, ah, what the hell? And I think it was from Fragrance X actually when I purchased a bunch and, um, yeah, I'm super late on this and it really is weird because when I usually love a fragrance like this one so, so much, um, I really usually gravitate towards the flankers and giving them a chance. Um, I never really gave, again, uh, the sport moniker is always a, a, I hate to do this, but I always feel like, eh, it's a sport. I, I'm not even going to give it a try. I um, mean, I hate doing that because you should be giving everything a try, but I, I do it too. And with one of my favorite releases, like, uh, you know, maybe I didn't see mint in the note breakdown and I was just like, I'm not getting this. The mint was what I loved about the original Roadster. Um, so this one, again, not a blind buy. I smelt it last year. Again, I wore it like three, four times off a little sample. But let's uh, remind me of this. And these bottles are thick, they're heavy, they're beautiful. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Some people may not like these uh, designs, but I do. Um, so Roadster Sport, another freshie. And if I remember, still green. Yeah, she's still green. Um, oh, that citrus, it pops, man. The citrus is beautiful in here. Oh, that bergamot just... Um, <laughs> it glistens. <laughs> no, it doesn't glisten. It pops. Um, it's beautiful. Um, beautiful, beautiful bergamot. Some mandarin up here. Beautiful citrus opening. Um, it has a, a watery aspect too. Just kind of like this one. It has a watery aspect, which I really, really like in summertime of fragrances. A, a good watery aspect with some slight herbal aspects too. Of course, Roadster Sport. Um, it's got a light woody base to the fragrance, um, very high on the bergamot, um, very high on it. Sage, rosemary up in here, um, but patchouli, uh, really, really good release, a really solid release that um, I'm kind of sad that, you know, I've been going through all these years talking about Roadster and actually it's, you know, a little brother, sport, it's just as good. I mean, just as good. Um, again, I'm not going to boast that uh, I love mint. Mint is one of my favorite notes of all time. So um, this has a special place in my heart. But this is a solid, solid sport release, which you hardly hear that on the Robezoid channel. So <laughs> you know what that means. Um, really a, a solid release. Can't wait to wear it on my skin a little bit more of this one. Now, next we'll go with the Givenchy uh, gentleman here, uh, Cologne. I think this is one of... I think this is the newest release on this board here. Uh, no, Coconut Fizz is pretty uh, new too. So this is new, uh, had a little bit of a hype train in our fragrance community. Um, absolutely love the bottle design. Anything white um, just looks beautiful in a bottle design. Yeah, this looks so, so goddamn clean, pardon my French. Um, love it. Um, I've been uh, eyeballing Givenchy quite a bit. You're gonna see a lot of these in the hall. Um, I know I got the, um, the black bottle of this, uh, the EDP uh, version, but I'm looking to get more of these. You Just my other haul, I, I got the casual chic uh, version, the uh, discontinued, which was from the only series. This is not from the only series, but um, this one is supposed to be the, the clean, fresh, uh, fresh one, like the cologne version, just like the 1 million cologne here. Um, so let's see how good this release is. I just sprayed some on my thumb. <sighs> Okay, um, hmm, cr crisp, clean, fresh, dress up, um, slightly soapy, and that's why I go with the class up. Uh, I don't know if there's iris in here, but damn does it smell like there's iris, because it's, it's, iris always, that or neroli always classes up a scent. Um, heavy on the citrus. Uh, good herbal tones here back at it. 
Uh, there's some Pizzi Grain, Neroli. Yeah, there's Neroli in here. So I might be thinking Iris, but it might be the Neroli Pizzi Grain-like vibe, Neroli-like vibe. Uh, Iris, white, floral. Again, watery. Um, all three of these. Um, it looks like I've uh, skipped voyage, voyage here, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to you next. Uh, yeah, the Iris, not too lipsticky here. Actually, well done. There's some Ambrox in this fragrance, and you know what? This is probably the first release that has Ambrox in it that I actually don't mind it. Um, it's just an Italian-like cologne here that is just straightforward, well-composed. Now, again, with a lot of these lighter fragrances, a lot of people want to know about longevity and projection. This is not the video for that. Um, and we're going to have some pop the cherry action with all of these, but... Uh, <laughs> which we'll talk about that, but uh, those are telltale signs on how good these fragrances will be. Um, again, I'm not a huge advocate of that. I can have fragrances that only last three, four hours and I'm happy with them. I'll reapply or I'll use them for certain occasions that I just need them for three, four hours. Uh, but this one, again, um, kind of reminds me a little bit of this, the Roadster Sport, in that it's watery. It has some herbal takes to the fragrance, but it also pulls a lot of like a Actually, funny enough, a Prada Lum, not this one. This is the water one, and I, I haven't tested it yet. But the Prada, um, um, like that iris, watery, uh, soapy type feel. Clean cut. Um, actually, a really good release. I think that'll be great for um, spring, to be quite honest. Now, next, I skipped the Hermes uh, for good reason. Um, because I wanted to go grab my original... Um, Voyage, uh, Voyage, uh, Eau de Toilette version of uh, this release. Um, Hermes, um, you're going to notice in the next coming years is that I'm going to start picking up more Hermes based scents uh, from um, Elena's time with uh, Hermes. I've missed quite a few. He released a lot of fragrances, uh, him and his team. But uh, Voyage, uh, Voyage, I haven't done a fragrance review on this. I should because I purchased it on launch. I was excited about this release. I always feel like this release was a, an excellent release from the House of Hermes. Um, it, it just reminds me of a just a uh, worth your money designer release. Um, I just think that this release right here, it's versatile, easy to wear, dress it up, dress it down, shorts, suit, um, spring, summer, fall, winter, doesn't matter. It was just a solid mature uh, release from the House of Hermes. Now this is the Parfum edition of Voyage. Um, as you can see, there's a little line here that says tester. Um, so I got it for a little cheaper. These are pretty pricey to be honest. And there's a Terre d'Hermes Parfum edition too that I want to get uh, also, um, which is on the hit list too. But they're both very pricey. And I got a really good deal on fragrance buy under hundred bucks for this tester. Couldn't go wrong because it was like 150 Canadian solid everywhere I looked. And I finally found a tester for or for cheap for this this size, uh, which is 100 mil. Um, so the Pure Parfum Edition. This fragrance right here I'm thinking is going to piggyback on my original one that I, I love so much. Maybe darker. Again, um, it may stray away from it. It may stick to the same DNA and emphasize different notes. That's what uh, different concentrations kind of do to some releases. And, oh, <laughs> oh, um, not to poo-poo on the last three fragrances that I just smelt, but I am going to poo-poo on them. You guys are trash beside this thing. <laughs> Holy. Um, yeah, exactly what I said about Voyage, the um, Eau de Toilette, same here. Um, versatile, office friendly, um, travel friendly. Like I could wear this in on, on an airplane, on a bus, uh, travel friendly. It's not gonna be, um, you know, getting anybody angry that you're wearing fragrance or too much of it. Um, classy, well blended. Um, this is Elena at his best. It's clean, it's soapy, it's citrusy. There's a great punch of cardamom here. You can almost feel the green spicy vibe of the cardamom beautiful floral backbone to the release high-end designer release basically um unisex women men can wear it great tea note in this one which i i'm um you know I'm, I'm actually wanting to revisit this one now that i got that one i'm just like hey let's let's compare you two um so i can't wait um that's the 
fun thing of having this YouTube channel and this hobby. Um, wow. Wow. Um, well worth, um, you know, actually saving myself $50 waiting for it. Um, I'm very happy with my purchase. Right now, this is the standout of this haul. 100%, I mean, great release from the house of Hermes. Now let's move on to another clean one, I'm assuming. Um, so the theme here is pretty freaking clean. Like these are all almost office friendly. Boom, 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 this one. Still a little playful, but I think can, uh, can be done. So this um, Prada Lum series, um, I started my Prada and I do have a couple Pradas here actually on the side and I do apologize that I'm off camera, but uh, I started my Prada journey with Infusion Dumb, you know, soapy clean fragrance and Prada Amber Pudum. A lot of you youngins, and a lot of you don't watch me because you are youngins, you have other channels to look at. I'm, I'm the old school crowd here, 30 and up, what up? Uh, <laughs> um, that's where I started my journey and this is where Prada started um, in the men's aisle and um, they just started basically that's what their niche was was clean soapy releases and they haven't stopped this is exactly where they are still now uh, with the Prada online um, I purchased Lum a couple years back I guess year and a half ago and I bought the Intense liked them both actually Prada Lum I'm putting a huge dent in it and this is low um, the water version, I guess, Prada Lum Low. I'm um, again a tester. Again, uh, I didn't get the sexy box, but I don't really care. And it just says tester at the bottom. That's it. You still get the beautiful wrap on these. These bottles are absolutely gorgeous. Um, beautiful presentation. You put all all of these together, and they're they're great. Um, so this one right here. Oh yeah, it steals. Oh man, it steals a lot from the original. Um, already like off the top. <sighs> So, clean, iris, powdery, uh, a little bit of amber in here, like a sweetness, an ambery sweetness, a, a little bit of thickness there, a little bit here. Great for office use, versatile from what I smell here, clean, classy, um, it has some citrusy aspects here, and maybe that's where they're going with the low version. It has that classy, high-end Prada DNA all over it. It's written all over it. Won't disappoint a hardcore Prada fan. Um, I kind of feel, again, I haven't, you know, I don't have my Prada Lum beside me here, but I kind of feel like a redundant purchase, to be quite honest, if you own the original. Um, I might be wrong, and that's what testing, 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 testing is what I do to, to let you know about that, but... I feel like this is very close from the original. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's a really good thing. It was a really good release. But I, I'm, I really want to start dissecting this one and seeing what I get um, different from this one. So, again, a solid release, but nothing I'm getting too excited about because I feel like I already got it. So we'll see what's different in this one. Um, I kind of like the citrusy punch, and I, that might be the difference here. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I'll dissect that one. Still happy with that release. Next is from the house of Guerlain, and this is from their Aqua Allegoria line, which I absolutely love, own several from them. Um, it feels like every single haul that I have has at least one Aqua Allegoria. They release at least two or three a year, and they actually released three just recently. Um, so I'm excited about this one because this was last year's, and I've I've actually been patiently waiting for this one to be at Discounters Fragrance Buy.ca, got it, and I just jumped all over it. 60 bucks for uh, a tester of this. So I didn't get the box and I didn't really give an F about the box because I really wanted to smell a coconut-based scent from um, Guerlain, honestly. And this thing right here, I'm gonna tell you, man, <laughs> oh. this one right here, Coconut Fizz, um, very aromatic as a scent. Um, what comes to mind, first of all, the coconut in here, simply gorgeous. Green coconut. Um, again, coconut, uh, some people will kind of classify this as a figgy coconut because fig does bring out a coconut vibe, uh, aka Mark Jacobs, man. But uh, I digress. Um, this coconut um, note is very watery. I mean, it really feels like someone chopped up a coconut 
made you know they made a drink out of it but it was just basically you know there's no boozy aspect here this, this is just straight up i love the watery aspect again a lot of these have a watery aspect to uh the releases and they're all well done and in here very watery very green very much coconutty i mean it actually has a little bit of a fizzy feel to the fragrance uh case in point coconut fizz um brings me to the beach, but it doesn't really have a suntan lotion feel. And a lot of coconut based scents may have that, especially with some florals in the back end of it. There is some florals in the back end of this fragrance, which is freesia. Um, add some sweetness to the end of this release of this fragrance. Overall, I am not disappointed with coconut fizz. I, I again, um, you got, I have to be careful with a YouTube channel and saying how much I love this because some people may not like unisex based scents. So just be careful. Aqua Ligorias are very much unisex. And a lot of people could say in the men's aisle that um, this is more leaning towards feminines. Um, for me, this is like if you're going to ignore this just because it's in the women's aisle, who are you? Because this is absolutely gorgeous. A great coconut. Um, Wow, a great coconut note. And I'm always looking for a great coconut release. This might be it. I'm really just a great casual wear, wear type of scent that I would wear in the high heat, high density of the heat. Um, great coconut watery vibe. Coconut Fizz, a good one from Guerlain. And um, again, the hype is real in, in my own, like I was making my own hype here. I don't think maybe one or two reviewers talked about this on YouTube. That's about it. Um, I make my own hypes. <laughs> um, and this one is good. Um, if you can get it for the price I got, like 60 bucks Canadian. For you Americans, it's like, it's a drop in the bucket for you. Um, let's move on to the Artisan. And uh, the last two actually um, are brands that I'm highly familiar with. I own probably a dozen of each brand, maybe more. L'Artisan Parfumeur and of course Uncle Serge, Serge Dutin. Um, absolutely love both brands. I feel like both brands highly underrated on YouTube. Again, brands that just don't get the love they should. Maybe that's why I'm still on this platform to give them the love they should. Um, I know that there is some reviewers um, that did spotlight these two. And to those reviewers, if they're watching, you guys are the shit because I love our reviewers that spotlight fragrances like this. So this one. Of course, this one here is a Batucada. Um, and again, um, this is a blind buy. Um, these actually, the Selge and Artisan is a blind buy, but I, I brought out my old Artisan bottles. This is how long it's been since I bought an Artisan based scent. Um, these are the bottles that I'm used to. And they've released these type of bottles for years. It's been years now. Um, so it's been a while and I'm happy to get back into uh, the house of L'Artisan Parfumeur. Now this one is highly, um, from what I read, lime based. Um, you can't go wrong. Well, yes, you can go wrong. Azure Lime by Tom Ford. You can't go wrong with a lime based scent. But <laughs> this one right here, very natural lime. Um, as you can see, I'm smiling because, goddamn, this coconut fizz that's right beside it, uh, Batucada, is both very solid releases that I can see myself wearing at the beach. Um, natural lime. It's got like a sugary uh, tone to the fragrance. There's some mint leaf action. And I mean herbal mint leaf action um, in here. There's some coconut vibe and that might be from coconut fizz, but I feel a little bit of a coconut fizzy, icy quality here. The lime's simply outstanding. Like I'm just smelling this and I'm like, damn, that lime is good. It uh, feels like there's like a salty rim to this uh, concoction here that I'm, I'm smelling. So again, if you're going for something for the summer here, something new and some from brands like L'Artisan Parfumeur and Guerlain, um, I feel like these two would be a one-two punch. Now they might be, <laughs> I'm speaking too soon here, um, they might be redundant to each other um, because it feels, man, ah, it's got like a floral beachy quality to this scent. Um, it really <laughs> kind of reminds me of this one. Not heavy on the, this is heavy on the coconut, by the way. This is heavy on the lime off this strip. Again, it's very early, but I'm very excited about both of them. They both could possibly make my top 10 summer list for uh, designer and for, uh, of course, uh, niche. 
Yeah, this one's very interesting. And Lazi Zan Parfumar, they're freshies, like Anana Fizz, uh, the fig base, Premier Figuier is one of the first figs in the game. Um, they have L'Eau de l'Artisan, which is very good uh, citrusy base scent. Um, they have a lot of um, uh, really good softer scents that I feel um, don't get the love that they should. But this one, really good one. I'm happy. <laughs> well, last but not least, Uncle Serge. And I, I like to call him Uncle Serge for, for reasons. But uh, Serge Dutin, Christopher Sheldrake. Um, it feels like such a journey. Since I've been on YouTube, I've been talking about Uncle Selge and Sheldrake for so long. And here's my vintage Shergi bottle um, with that super dark juice and uh, a, a beautiful fragrance. I own, like I said, uh, at least a dozen, maybe more of Selge Town fragrances. Um, this is the old school 50 mil bottles. They're going with this 100 mil ones. And as you can see, huge difference in size. Oof. But that dark juice just gets me like this is dark red by the way might as well introduce this uh, fragrance right here this is uh, baptême du feu uh, baptême du feu yeah uh, very much a um blind buy for me um i think the name's badass uh <laughs> the juice is legit sheldrake is the composer behind it and with uncle Serge, i'm 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 hoping and i'm i'm praying because it's been a while since i bought an uncle Serge release um but I'm praying this is going to be an old school Sheldrake uh, Sarge release just by the color of the juice, the name and the note breakdown, which obviously when I purchased it, I always take a look at it and I take a look at the reviews too. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a total chump. I don't uh, blind buy like a, like a wiener. Um, I actually do my research. Um, I know what I like. I know, I know what to do when I blind buy. And as you can see, you know, these are, I roll the dice once in a while. Some are for collection purposes. Some are for, of course, uh, collection purposes. But uh, some are for, of course, the nose behind it and discontinuation, things like that. So a lot of things come into play. Like certain notes like coconut um, interest me. Oh, this thing is radiating. This is, <laughs> mm, oh, 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 this is, yes. Yes. Anybody that is a fan of Serge Lutin fragrances, Sheldrake, this is, <laughs> I haven't even put it to my nose. This thing is radiating off this strip, and this strip's right at my knee right now. This thing is <laughs> syrupy, woody, dark, um, spice, hot spices. Oh, dry. Oh, man. Where do I start? Everything a Serge Lutin fragrance should be. This must, This is a recent release, too. This is really... Um, man. All right, let's tackle it. Um, how can I... <laughs> this, is the, this is the type of fragrances that you shouldn't be doing, like describing it off this thing. It, it's just not doing justice. I should turn the camera off, just say it's good, and move on. But let's go. Um, it's warm. It's dry. Um, it's a comforting scent, but it's very much a Sheldrake composition um, where this has to be for an experienced nose. And I'll be quite honest with you and quite blunt. Um, this is a very much a um, challenging release. It is outstanding off this strip. Um, there's a, let's go, there's some, some redness with the, 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 the juice. There's some redness in this one. It kind of feels like a red cherry cough syrup slash let's hit some cloves in there let's put some ginger hot ginger in here uh syrupy red um it almost smells you know what it, it steals a page from sheep de rouge which is i absolutely hate that fragrance it's the only fragrance i hate from uncle Sage. it's just because it's so goddamn potent I mean, it's it's weird um it steals a page of that it's a little weird and there's a, like they say, quote unquote, a gunpowder note in this uh, release. I kind of smell it. It has a smoky quality, but it has some woody uh, nuances too. Um, it has an orange-like quality, but it also has some um, some uh, apricot uh, from the Osmanthus. Uh, definitely a weird, but it's one of those that you're just like, damn, 
And for me, it's just uh, puts a smile on my face because it's a Sheldrake composition that is a legit Sheldrake composition. I'm happy I got 100 mils of this stuff. I'm never going to go through 100 mils of this stuff, but I'm happy I got the big bottle. Not that they had the small bottle in stock, but um, I got that for 80 Canadian, I think, tester bottle. 100 mil, 80 bucks. That's designer price. 80 bucks Canadian, by the way. Um, yeah, wow. This smells like a $190 release niche, um, USD. That's what it smells like. Warm, dry, comforting, challenging, exactly what you come to expect. I actually cannot wait till fall comes into play. This is an outstanding release. I love it. It gets me going with the House of Sajutan now. I'm going to stop the show. I'm going to go on my computer and go, okay, what else has Sheldrake released from Uncle Serge? Am I missing out on some Sheldrake masterpieces here? Because this thing off a strip, gorgeous. Again, word of warning, it's challenging. It's different. It is for the experienced nose out there. So don't take this excitement and go, ah, I'm going to blind buy this while you're buying things like this. No, please don't do that. But oh my God. <laughs> if you're a fan of Sheldrake stuff, yes, it hits like it hits like it's supposed to hit. Sheldrake, you're a genius with that one. That one's great. Well, now that you heard my take on my, uh, my haul, eight bottles thick, double C. <laughs> I'd like to see what you guys think about this in the comments below. You can talk about uh, the whole haul. What do you think about it? Um, your thoughts on particular fragrances in this one. Um, what I should be discovering from some of these brands. Go check out something else, Mark. Um, I always love to see your suggestions. Um, I'm definitely, I want these two brands right here, Artisan Serge. Um, I feel like in the midst of summer, I'm going to try to bulk up a little bit for my fall and winters and kind of get a few more of this brand, especially uh, the, some of the darker ones from L'Artisan, maybe some recent releases um, that I may have missed um, during my journey. But uh, really, I'm overall, I'm happy. And you can see, like, I don't have to, I'm not lying to you. Um, I'm excited about all these releases and I can't wait to delve into them more. You're going to see Pop the Chair in every single one of them. I got eight pop the cherries right beside me now. That's a lot of work for me. <laughs> but tune in and subscribe if you haven't. As always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.